So, hey everybody, um, it's been an exciting morning listening to the upcoming developments for IRs. So we're really happy to hear about all that. Um, I'm Janice, the Digital and Web Services Librarian. Um, I'm part of the SFU team that worked on the migration um, from Content DM to Islandora 7 a few years ago. And I currently assist with ongoing maintenance of our uh, Islandora 7 sites. Um, my colleague Dawn. Don Taylor is the University Copyright Officer and Institutional Repository Coordinator. Um, he oversees the day-to-day -day management of Summit, SFU's Institutional Research Repository, and has a good, deep understanding of the content of the site and who our main end users are, so he interacts with the faculty and departments and so on. <clears throat> So a little bit of historical context. Um, our current Drupal 6 site is a little bit fragile and becoming um, unreliable. It is also somewhat dated, as you can see, and um, not very user friendly. So for example, there are no breadcrumbs or any way for a person to navigate back to the home page. Um, thus our motivation to upgrade and migrate to a new solution. As I mentioned here at SFU, we are already an Islandora institution with a number of Islandora 7 sites for our digitized collections and newspapers, um, which we will be looking to migrate to Islandora 8 um, soon-ish. Um, so this will be a great experience for us. Um, before 2011, um, the SFU IR was a DSpace repository. So the first step in this current migration project that we took was to take note of the current features and functionality that we have and that we want to keep. And um, I'll talk a bit more about these requirements later. Um, when we moved to the current Drupal 6 in, um, IR, we based our metadata on the Dublin Core Metadata Initiative. And um, we have customized Drupal fields for metadata. So you can see in this screenshot, some of the customized Drupal fields, uh, for example, rights holder or thesis type. Um, this is one of the reasons why our metadata migration um, won't be too problematic as we are not migrating from mods, for example, but our metadata is already in Drupal fields. Um, Dawn's going to talk next about what's coming next. So over to you, Dawn. Thanks, Janice. Um, so as you can see from the slide, just currently in our Drupal 6 repository, we have only three content types. Um, there's an author page, which is similar to like the scholar entities in, um, in Scholar. Uh, there's the standard web page, and there's the Summit repository item content type. So all content in Summit is done using a single content type. Um, we have no parent-child relationships. Um, files are simply attached to the Summit repository item with no metadata attached to that file. Um, and our, the new IR, when we move to Islandora 8, it'll utilize two content types. There'll be thesis content type, because the majority of our content is thesis, and then there'll be the everything but a thesis content type. Um, as you saw from the previous screen with Janice, um, our metadata is already stored in Drupal fields. So Islandora 8's utilization of this concept is nothing new to us and it's not raising any deep existential concerns for us since we've been doing this for close to a decade already. Um, and finally, in the current uh, IR, we use Drupal tags to manage our collections. So a repository item is given one or more Drupal tags from a collection taxonomy, and that's what controls where the, um, what the collection the item appears in. Okay. So moving to the next slide, yes. Um, so Continuing with what we currently have, um, I guess what, the, what Drupal 6 gave us, which we had really wanted and which we want to continue hopefully into I8, are these permissions. Um, Drupal enabled us to develop fine-grained permissions for a variety of roles, um, some of which, let's be honest, they were probably overkill based on the actual uptake of those particular roles. When only three people in the institution are using it, you know that you uh, overestimated the demand for it. Um, but our most successful role was something that we call the IR maintainer. And it was a role that allowed for significant ad admin-like control, but only for a subset of content. 
So the access was based on the Drupal tags given to an IR item. Um, so this gave departmental staff the ability to upload items, create items, and edit items within a specific collection, but they couldn't see anything else in any other collection. Um, so it was a tight restriction on the content that could be deposited by any particular user. Um, and then we had other significant in-house customizations. We created a, a basic stats module. Um, Janice talked about institutional specific metadata, and we also tried to mimic the, uh, what Scholar had with their uh, Scholar nodes. So um, where we are going and why, that first screen Janice showed you is the big reason why we are moving on. Um, it's the end of life for Drupal 6 and our current site is very brittle and unstable. And in fact, it's already crashed twice in the past eight months. Um, it needs a refresh um, aesthetically and function wise. It is behind the times. Um, and I8 gives us the ability to leverage the power of Drupal 8 as well. Um, so moving, you know, one of the big things actually, I think it was talked about earlier today was also the ability to mint and register DOIs. Um, that's a big demand and we should have that with I8. Um, as well, of course, I8 is just gonna give everybody a better experience. Um, we can have a much better search interface, um, like a results page that provides an advanced search, better utilization of facets. Um, and also moving to I8 will allow us, because we, we have a history with our IRs of, um, we don't just roll it out and leave it there. Um, we do actually, we try to respond to large user requests um, to then, you know, modify the IR and nimbly respond to sensible user requests. So migrating to Island or eight is gonna allow us to be responsive again to user feedback in a way that we haven't been able to for probably five years. Um, and just a couple of other things. Um, I8 makes mediated deposit easier than our current system does. Um, our current IR was designed for self-deposit and that was a mistake. We've learned that. And of course, it's also gonna be a nice test case for the institution. Um, it'll be the first migration of digital content to I8 at SFU. Some it's a relatively straightforward migration due to the homogeneity of content. We've got standard metadata and it's a smaller collection with only about 17,000 items in it. So it'll serve as a great test case for migrating Islandora 7 content that we have in other repositories to I8. And my <clears throat> last little bit to say is basically on what we're missing right now in the migration and what there's the potential for development are, what we will be developing as the migration moves forward. So a couple of items that are missing that we're going to need solutions for is um, an enhanced metrics module for institutional and author reports on usage. So the institution wants to know how its IR is being used, what's being added, the material that's being added amongst other things, and individual contributors want to know how their material is being used, and they want those nice dashboard reports. So getting this developed and implemented prior to going live will be crucial. Um, we also need flexible embargoes. Um, currently, there's not an embargo module that allows for, I mean, there is the, there's the embargoes module from the University of Florida that we're gonna take a very close look at. Um, so hopefully that'll work for us. Finally, um, so development plans, what are we hoping to develop before we go live? Um, a really important thing for us is integration or data sharing, particularly metadata sharing with external services. So specifically, we're looking for integration with ORCID. Uh, that's something researchers at the university are very keen on. Um, we want integration with open air. So if you not, don't know what open air is, it's a European initiative. And the Canadian Association of Research Libraries is working with libraries and open air to ensure there's a way to make metadata for Canadian publications available in Open Air Canada repository. And also to use open air as text and data binding techniques to obtain all the funding information for each publication that's in our repositories. So open air provides that other statistics of value as well. So we wanna be harvested by open air and then obviously to take their data back again as well and utilize it. And lastly, we need to uh, operate with Theses Canada. That's Library and Archives Canada's thesis repository. Uh, we need to be harvestable by them. 
Um, we hope to use a linked agent field, as you can see there, to manage names in our IR as a taxonomy. So we'd like to use the controlled access terms module for this, and it would be fantastic development for us because it would give us name authority control, uh, something that we've never had. We'd also like to model the Scholar Pages concept from Islandora Scholar. So bring that into Islandora 8. And we also need to have a Creative Commons license. So we're looking at using that Arizona develop something using a taxonomy and we'd like to, 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 to develop that further and use it for our, our CC licenses. And now I'm gonna hand it back to Janice. Thanks, Don. Um, so we're, we're kind of flying through our presentation, but I'll just uh, talk a little bit about oh, yeah. what's next in our timeline and um, metadata mapping and some metadata cleanup is um, something that we're gonna have to look at. We have right now, um, Summit has 40 plus parent collections, which is a very long list to scroll through, as you can imagine. Um, we have worked to collapse these to four sort of higher level or parent collections and the 40-ish um, other collections will either be merged together or become sort of um, child collections in that hierarchy. So that was a big step forward. Um, theme development. Uh, this is a really good opportunity uh, using Drupal 8 uh, to have a more modern theme for our IR and we have to keep within the SFU CLF, the common look and feel. Um, there's a little bit of room for variety, but the plan is to keep it clean and keep it simple. We, user testing is um, oft forgotten and um, we have started uh, user testing. We've almost completed our first round of user testing, doing a very brief open-ended survey, um, basically looking for feedback from our users um, about blockers or frustrations that they currently experience with the IR or the website, and um, also what they like, what they find useful. Um, as you can imagine, it's summertime, so um, we do have some feedback, but it could be better. <laughs> uh, so it's user testing, and we're hoping to also do prototype user testing um, moderated user testing where we give tasks and ask people to fulfill them based on um, the new IR and potentially some A-B tests, we'll see. And we'll probably round it out with another survey at the end. Everybody loves a good survey. Um, I'd like to give credit to um, uh, Kent State for inspiring our uh, wireframe. This is a potential vision for the future of our IR. And um, sorry, I just realized I ran right over a little bit I wanted to say about our requirements documentation. Um, as I mentioned previously, we've been working for a while on creating um, a very complete requirements document, which will guide the upgrade and the migration. Um, we've spent a fair bit of time on it. Um, after looking at what features and functionality we have and want to keep, we looked at the potential integrations, which Dawn has already mentioned, and potential developments, which are made possible by Drupal 8 and Islandora 8. Um, so as an example, open air and comprehensive metrics, which um, were mentioned already. So yeah, we kind of flew through that and um, we're uh, open for some questions. Uh, Emily asks, would you be willing to share your requirement document with the group? I was waiting for that question. <laughs> um, yes, but I think uh, we'd like to wait until we have, um, we're, we're going to be hiring someone to do most of the migration for us. So we'll probably wait until we've gone through that process and then happy to share, yes. Okay, slightly off topic question. Our main site is running Drupal 6, and although we are not subscribing to a D6 LTS vendor, uh, one can subscribe to DS security fixers for the low, low price of $125 US per month. <laughs> the enterprise offering is $1,200 US per month, which includes five developer hours. Why are we wasting this <laughs> energy on new stuff when we could <laughs> support Drupal 6 and retire while young? Well, <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, if I were still young, maybe. Um, yeah, I don't know. 
I need to start reading these all the way to the end before I start reading them out loud so I know which tone to take, obviously. <laughs> Thank you, William, for that. Um, okay. Uh, serious question. Which was the role with only three active users in the D6 install? Oh, I can answer that. Um, we had developed this role, which was, we called it designated submitter. So it was the idea that, oh, we're going to have these researchers submitting material, but really they don't want to do it. Or when they're doing it, then they want to have their, their graduate research assistant or someone like that make any edits or changes to that record. Um, so, you know, they would be able to designate this user as being able to edit and make any changes to content that they had uploaded. So, yeah, we had this role called designated submitter. And I, I literally believe about it was taken up by three individuals. And that was all. It sounded great, but again, user testing probably would have told us that it wasn't that necessary. 